Cool Vertigo Effect Spray Spray New Tutorial Alright, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is brought to you by Storyblocks. So our setup is pretty much the same as it always is. You've seen me do this a lot. We've got two Aperture 300D Mark IIs. The first one is overhead here with the Aperture Lantern giving us some backlight, good amount of light on the blue screen. If you don't, if you bleh, if you do not properly light your blue screen or green screen, you're gonna have a not so wonderful time. Lots of light on the background is important. Our key light, pretty similar situation. We're using a strip light diffuser. This is my preferred diffuser for food and beverage stuff, uh, particularly cans and bottles. We're gonna be turning the products on the Edelkrone Pan Pro. This gives us a nice consistent rotation for both our products, making our transition a lot easier. Get the full 360 degrees. So our can now looks nice and cold. So what we're gonna do now, and this is very important, we're gonna bring in a piece of white foam core. As we bring in that foam core, look how much it brightens up that side of the can. This is with it away from the can, and here is us bringing it in. And you can see it really fills in the light on that far side of the can. So now that everything's in place, I can use my phone to control the Pan Pro. I'm gonna hit record, and we're gonna get some rotations going. I think we're gonna go with like three or four full rotations, and that should be enough to work with. Today we're getting this clip with the Sony a7S III. We've got the Sony 90mm macro as our lens. Now as our can comes around here, we're just gonna stop our rotation and we're very quickly gonna grab our other can. I'm gonna place our can where the yellow can just was. And now we'll just continue our rotation and let that spin around three or four times. But that just about does it for filming our two products here. Hopefully it went well. We're gonna hop in a final cut and see if we can create a cool transition out of that. All right, welcome to Final Cut Pro X. We're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Now I've already gone ahead and trimmed down our clips to the length we want. You can see that our logo comes around. We spin and get our second logo and the clip ends. If we take our second clip and drag it underneath the first clip, you can see that they are in fact the same length. This is what we wanna do before we get started because we wanna make sure everything is lined up. Now to make sure everything is lined up, you can go to the end here to our ending logo and disable our top clip. And you can see that the cans are more or less in the same position. It doesn't have to be perfect right now as long as it is close because for this effect we'll be doing some tweaking later on but for the time being it doesn't have to be perfect so our next step is to highlight both clips and hit command R to bring up our retiming controls I'm gonna slow these both down to 80% speed I'm gonna scrub through here to the point where I want our transition to start and where I want the cans to speed up I think right around here is probably pretty good so I'm gonna select our clip and hit shift B and without moving our playhead I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the bottom clip as well. I'm going to continue scrubbing through here to the point where I want the transition to possibly end. So I'm going to hit Shift B once again on the top clip and then Shift B on the bottom clip. I'm going to select this little arrow here and make it fast 20%. That creates our speed ramp and repeat the same for our bottom clip. So the next thing we want to do here is of course key out the blue background and remove our reflector. I'm going to open our effects panel. I'm going to search for keyer. And before I go ahead and drag that on, I'm actually going to disable the bottom clip clip so that we can see what we're doing. Make sure the top clip is selected. Click and drag the keyer right on top of our clip and you'll see that it punches out the background. Now you might have also noticed it actually changed the color of our can. This is no longer the blue it once was because when we applied the keyer it is now looking more green. That is because the color of the can closely matches the background so the keyer mistakes this color for being spill. So all we have to do is go to the spill level number here and drag that to zero and we get the original color of our can back. I'm also going to go up to fill holes here and drag that all the way to make sure we're not losing anything in the limes or the small details. And now I'm finally going to scroll down to crop and I'm going to crop out the right side of the frame. And now we just have our clean can without a background. Now we're going to go ahead and disable our top clip and repeat the same process for the bottom clip. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and re-enable the top clip and disable the bottom clip because we're going to start off by working on our top clip. And now we can finally move on to the fun part. You're going to want to go ahead and bring in a motion graphic of your choice. I've got this fun one here from Storyblocks. I found it by simply searching for drip overlay or drip transition. Storyblocks has tons of these individual clips as well as packs of these types of assets to choose from. Okay, so people keep asking me if Storyblocks is actually worth the money. And every time I say 100% 
yes. There is almost never a project nowadays where Storyblocks and having that access to an unlimited amount of royalty-free stock footage doesn't come in handy. I am constantly finding myself looking for things on Storyblocks to spice up my videos, whether that's overlays and motion graphics like this one, some cool backgrounds to add to my videos. No matter what it is, Storyblocks always comes in clutch because with the Storyblocks unlimited all access plan, I can download as many clips as my heart desires, use them for my own projects and for client work, and nobody is going to come after you for copyright infringement because when you get the plan, you have the license to use the footage. Now, if you or somebody you know might be interested in Storyblocks, then go to the link down in the description below or go to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer to learn more. So now that we've got this cool motion graphic in our timeline, we're going to want to go ahead and apply it to our footage. So I'm going to scrub through here and find the point where our can starts to speed up and our transition might begin. I think right around there looks pretty good. So I'll drag and drop our motion graphic right over top and making sure it's selected, I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. Now you can see that by adding that multiply blend mode, we have actually eliminated the white background to our motion graphic and it's just this black part. The problem, however, is that we just want that black part to cover the can and not the entire frame. Now the first instinct that might come to mind is to mask out the shape of the can and do it that way but that is way too tedious and I, I'm just not in the mood to do that. So what we're gonna do instead is click and hold option on our keyboard, select our can clip and duplicate it by dragging it up and over top of our motion graphic. You can see that the can is now in front of the motion graphic and all we're gonna do is go back into our blend modes here, making sure that the can layer is selected and we're going to switch this to stencil alpha. And boom, just like that, we have the black part of our motion graphic just covering the can. If we select the can layer underneath and disable it, you can see that it just punches out the shape of the can, which is why we need both layers. Now, what happens with blend mode sometimes is that they're not perfect, and occasionally you get a weird lighting change that looks strange. So to fix that, what we're gonna do is scrub through here to the start of when our blend mode is just creeping into our can here, and making sure that the motion graphic is selected, we're gonna set the opacity capacity to 100% and create a keyframe. Next, we're going to take our playhead and scrub backwards to the start of the clip and we're gonna set the opacity to zero. Depending on the effect you're doing and the type of motion graphic you're using, you may or may not have to use this step. For me, I just do it anyway, just in case. A quick little fix like that can make a transition a lot less jarring. Now playing this back, I'm noticing that the effect kicks in way too late, pretty much after the speed ramp even happens. So we're just gonna take our motion graphic and drag it back a bit to make sure that our timing is right. And this to me looks a lot better. Now our next step is to click through our transition frame by frame and when it is fully black, we're actually going to cut our can clips and delete the excess because we no longer need them. From here, we can highlight these three clips, right click and make it a compound clip. We're gonna save this as green, hit OK. And now we can re-enable our bottom clip, right click it and make that a compound clip as well and name it yellow. Once again, we're gonna click through frame by frame until the point where our transition starts. And as soon as we see that right there, this is where we can go and take the beginning of our yellow clip and trim it to start at that point. Gonna take the playhead here and scrub through a little bit. And now we're gonna add a luma keyer to our green can clip. Now we're using the luma keyer to remove the black area over the can because underneath is our yellow can which is what we want to see. So to do that, I'm gonna drag this back a little bit so that we can see our can, drag this over, and this is gonna take some trial and error, and depending on your footage and how you're doing this, it might be a little bit different. I'm gonna go into our mat tools here, and I'm going to select fill holes. I'm also going to shrink the edge just a little bit and also add a slight erode. So now we're at the point where we can start lining up the cans and make them match. What I found to be most effective is to take our bottom can and reduce the size of it to 98.5%. By having the can underneath a little bit smaller, it's easier to hide behind the top can. So starting on this first frame here and making sure our bottom can clip is selected, I'm gonna look carefully at this edge and turn on our transforms. I'm also gonna set a keyframe on our position and I'm gonna start adjusting. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to skip ahead one frame and that looks good. Skip ahead another frame. You can see that the top here isn't totally lined up. So I'm going to drag up just a little bit. That looks good. Move ahead a frame. That looks pretty good. Another frame, maybe move this over just a little bit. And we're just going to keep repeating this process until we have gone through the whole transition. 
Once we've gotten to the end, we can go ahead and click done. And we can also cut our top clip right there because we don't need the rest of it. And if we go ahead and play back what we just did, this is what it looks like. So what I want to do now is actually fade out the top can a little bit as this transition is happening. So starting around here, I'm going to set the opacity keyframe to 100%. I'm going to click through to the last frame of our transition right here and set that to 70%. And that just smooths out our transition a tiny bit more, which never hurts. Next step is to give our cans a quick color grade, nothing too fancy here, just some contrast and saturation. And now we're just gonna grab this blue solid and drag it underneath the entire thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything and make a new compound clip. I'm gonna call it, uh, I don't know, let's just call it cans. And now we're going to bring in this background that I also got on Storyblocks by searching Tropical Background. Go back into the Effects panel, find the keyer, and drag and drop that onto our clip. From here, just like before, we're going to take down that spill level so that we don't change the color of the can. In our matte tools, we're going to shrink this down to about negative three. And now for our secret ingredient, which is the light wrap, we're going to boost that up to about, I don't know, let's call it 25. I'm going to scrub back to the start here and adjust the size and position of our can. First, I'll bring up our horizon, turn on our transforms, keyframe our scale and our position. Now I'm going to skip ahead to the end, make sure that is still centered and increase the size to 120. Looking at it now, I'm actually going to adjust our light wrap and increase it to 40. All the light wrap is doing is kind of matching the exposure of our edges of the can to match the background. It just blends everything together a little bit nicer. Speaking of the background, it's a little bit too bright and distracting for me. So I'm going to select it and go to our effects panel. I'm going to search for Gaussian and I'm going to drag that on here. I'm going to turn that down to about 9% and I'm also going to darken it down as well. And that to me looks a lot better. Now there's actually a whole number of cool things we can do here to integrate our can into the scene even more. I'm gonna duplicate our background layer and drag it above our can. And you can see that we have this nice leaf in the foreground and I wanna keep that. I'm gonna go into the effects tab here and search for draw mask. I'm gonna drag that onto our leaf clip here. And I'm simply just gonna draw a mask around this leaf. And because this leaf is in the foreground, I'm gonna turn down the blur to only 2%. I'm going to add keyframes to the transforms as well as the control points. And I'm going to scrub through a little bit here and just drag this, scrub through, drag, scrub through and drag till it is no longer covering the can. And now we have this kind of cool added element of the leaf in front of the can, which helps to tie the can into the scene just a little bit more, makes it look like it actually belongs. Now there's some other stock footage here from Storyblocks that I want to add to this. So I'm going to take this dust particle overlay and put that underneath the can layer, cut it down to size, switch the blend mode to add. I'm actually going to flip it. I'm going to increase the size of it and turn it down to 10%. Next, I'll bring in this lens flare up top here, cut it down to size, switch the blend mode to add and turn it down to 25%. That's without and that's with. And finally, I have this kind of golden hour lens flare also from Storyblocks, which I'll drag over top of everything. Cut that down to size as well. Because this overlay isn't very dark, this time I'm going to set the blend mode to soft light and I'm going to turn it down to about 50%. And that, my friends, is it. After all that hard work, here is the final result. Sometimes these things take a little bit of trial and error. You don't always get it on the first try. You gotta roll with the punches, punch it, punch with the rolls.